What is going on everyone, it's Justin here, and today I've got a what is on my Mac video, where I show you guys some of the apps that I currently have on my computer, both in the desktop and portable side, along with some of the extensions and programs that I might use, say, on Chrome. So I tried to do this video about once a year just to show you my workflow, and if you guys are looking to, say, enhance your professional or business workflow, there might be a few tips here and there. I'm definitely not an expert at it, and I'm still trying to optimize it myself, but I do feel like I have a few apps that I've tried and used and really enjoy. So for starters, uh, you guys might see this is like the other side of my desk setup. I'm gonna be doing a full desk setup video very soon. I did do a video showing you the process of how I put this all together. So if you guys are excited for the desk setup video, just make sure you subscribe, have your notifications on, and uh, make sure you drop a like on this video because I do have a giveaway in that episode. So on the computer side of things, I've definitely jumped around a lot in the past few years. I've gone between the MacBook Pro to the iMac for a very brief period of time, then back to the MacBook. And as someone who traveled a lot previously, I thought that the MacBook was gonna be my go-to setup. But what I noticed is that because all the trips were so short, I didn't end up doing any editing on the go, and instead I was just kind of carrying extra weight. And I would usually prefer to come home and get the edit done in my actual workspace which was just far more efficient than trying to edit in say a hotel while I was jet lagged. So when the Mac Pro 2019 came out, I decided to pre-order it and pick it up. I was very excited for it. And the specs that I have is a 16 core processor and it also has, I believe, two Vega 2 32 gigabyte GPUs. So a total of 64 gigs of uh, video RAM as well as 200 gigs of RAM that was provided by OWC. And lastly, an eight terabyte Excelsior from OWC, which is what I use for editing. This computer is definitely of a higher spec. Uh, we edit in 6K raw red footage, so we definitely need the power. In terms of performance, I will say that when the computer performs well, it is really good but it still has the same number of crashes and glitches that I had on my previous computer. So it hasn't really gotten rid of the issue of speed. Um, on the go, I actually don't use a MacBook Pro anymore. I have switched over to the MacBook Air from 2020. I feel like this year is a good year to pick up the MacBook Air because it has the quad core processor options. So you have a bit of power and for photo editing and like for administrative work, it is exactly what I need and I've been very happy with it. So for a lot of students out there, this is a computer that I can recommend. But let's just jump into some of the apps on my computer and the first thing is called Hidden Me. So as you guys probably see, my desktop is an absolute mess. So if I want to hide it, I just have to click this button right here and uh, show the hide desktop icons. Um, and in terms of monitoring the computer and seeing how it is performing, I use um, iStat menus and it shows the processors, uh, how much of it is being used, the GPU performance. Um, I'm able to see whether or not the second GPU that I spent a lot of money on is actually being effectively utilized. Um, beyond that, it also shows your memory performance and all that stuff. You can really customize it, which is nice, but I've gotten a lot of questions about this in the past and I personally have no problem with it. You can also have like weather notifications and disk performance as well, but I have all my fundamental performance metrics right there. Uh, I also use Apple calendars, which has all my schedules, my package arrivals. Um, I stopped using reminders. I tend to just use Notion for stuff now. And um, over on the uh, notes app, I have all of the information for videos. So, and say we're trying to plan a shoot and just want to throw all the ideas and everything on one page, we uh, have a list of that here as well. And when everything gets shifted over to Notion, that is when it's really cleaned up. Um, I know a lot of you guys asked me to do like a Notion video, so if you guys want to see a dedicated video on that, make sure you drop a comment down below. Uh, but my main video editing platform is uh, Final Cut Pro 10. I pretty much spend the entire day on this, and I have mentioned before, it crashes a ton and there's many frustrations, but as of now, I think I'm still gonna stick to an Apple workflow as opposed to going over to like Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve. The way I have my file sorted out for video editing is I have my main disk, which is the fast one, the Excelsior, for all of my video projects. Uh, eight terabytes is quite a bit to work with. As you guys can see, I have a ton of videos right here, but I also have a secondary drive that runs the podcast stuff. So usually about two to three episodes at a time on the podcast drive. Quite a few plugins as well. I use a combination of ones from FX Factory and Motion VFX and for color correction, I use Color Finale. So I just have to um, apply the Color Finale plugin on the computer and if I want to, I can just edit the layers and from there, I can change like all the color settings and play with it depending on the clip. And as you guys can see, um, usually with my edits, I have like five or six layers and it starts out from like a base grade, which is to Rec. 709. And then you add like your first lot, your next set, and then um, you have your little color corrections on the HSL chart. 
this is like a very linear editing platform. There's not really much to say about it. Uh, I can spend hours and hours on video editing. Uh, I have thought about making like a Skillshare course because I do feel like I'm pretty familiar with Final Cut Pro 10. But the only reason why I invested so much in the computer is to run Final Cut Pro 10 as well as possible. Uh, when it comes to doing like general editing of thumbnails and stuff, um, I usually send it off to my graphic designer, Geo. But Photoshop is what I like to use quite a bit as well. Um, little retouching and like healing brush stuff, that is all super handy. And uh, when I'm doing the thumbnails, we have a set of templates for the podcast. And from there, we're able to just uh, click on one thing and say, um, we're gonna ramble that episode, um, change that as the title and we can put any image we want behind there and it has like the gradient to everything and it just looks very seamless. Uh, so I'm definitely not like the most advanced at Photoshop, but I try to know my way around it a little bit just to get the things I need to done relatively quickly. When it comes to Adobe Edition, I only use it to stretch the length of songs. So say a video is 17 minutes and the song is two minutes, I can put it in there, hit enable remix and type in the length that I need and it will be able to seamlessly uh, figure out where it can be extended by. For photo editing, we use uh, Lightroom, and I tend to do a lot of my editing on the iPhone, but it also syncs very well with the computer version. And as you guys can see here, uh, when it comes to photo editing, I tend to have a preset that I put on, and then with any preset, you do have to customize it to fit your image. In this case, the car is already very red, so we don't have to bring up the saturation much more. Uh, but I feel like a lot of times with edits, it's really down to what you do in the masking. Every part of the image is a little bit different. You have your foreground, you have your background, you have what's in focus and out of focus, and you also wanna pick what your principal point of focus is. So a lot of times in these photos, the radial edit is the most important thing. Right here, I have a photo that was taken on an iPhone. And as you guys can probably see, the preset makes the food look good, but without the masking that is done all around it to change the saturation of different areas of the image, it doesn't get the same final result. I think with Lightroom and any photo editing software, you just wanna go ahead and play around with it and just get to know it over the years. Another great tool that I've also added is Pixelmator Pro. So I use Photoshop. I don't tend to use Pixelmator for any of its main settings, but the reason why I like to use this is for one very specific feature, and that is the ML Super Resolution. On the clothing company that I co-own, we do a lot of filler images, uh, which is just like general filler photos that add a bit of a, a theme to it. So there's a picture that is still of like a solid resolution, but could be better. Just hit ML Super Resolution and it will use like all of this AI data to be able to upscale the image and it actually does a really good job. Um, so this has been a lifesaver in many situations and it was something that I found through an article I believe on The Verge and I decided to give it a try for myself. The next thing is Clean My Mac. And I know there's like a lot of different Mac softwares out there that say they can clean your computer and a lot of them just seem like very sketchy and they might be free so people download them and they end up getting a virus on your computer computer, but Clean My Mac is one that I've been using for I believe like five years now, and the interface looks amazing, but it just does a good job. So I can scan the computer, it will find stuff that needs to be cleaned up, like cache files, Chrome files, uh, mail files. It can also find potential threats on the computer, and it can also check some of the large files that you might have on your computer that can be removed. So my typical kind of maintenance strategy is to hit the cleanup button, and I also go to the optimization or the maintenance side, which also rebuilds disk permissions. So a lot of times if your computer is just running too slow, I find that repairing disk permissions can, in some cases, depending on what's wrong with it, speed it up. But before I move on to the next app, I wanna give a huge thanks to the sponsor of this video, Hi-Fi, and their new electric car that is being announced recently. So what the Hi-Fi X is, is the world's first self-learning super SUV that is fully electric and has intelligent abilities. The car itself is based on a human-oriented architecture and is over-the-air upgradable, and the personalized onboard AI assistant was developed in collaboration with Microsoft. The vehicle itself has a neural network consisting of six super brain domain controllers and connected by 1G internet. This allows it to analyze a massive amount of information and make decisions utilizing cloud computing and powerful data analysis engine. All these capabilities allow the car to learn and improve over time. As a car itself though, the Hi-Fi X has level three autonomous driving at launch and is able to go zero to 100 kilometers an hour in 3.9 seconds. The 96 kilowatt power unit also provides a range of 610 kilometers. 
Just looking at the body itself though, it looks very unique and it has a combination of suicide and going doors. I'm someone who has personally been really fascinated by electric cars in the last couple months and as someone in tech, it is hard not to keep up with that industry and after attending multiple CESs, I noticed that electric cars are really the future and a lot of companies are really pushing the innovation of design and technology. If you guys want to learn more about them, just make sure you check that link down below and a huge thanks to them for sponsoring this video. Uh, Microsoft Word and Excel, nothing too exciting there. I try not to use it that much, but for like invoices or just like trying to calculate different payments and spreadsheets or inventory which I rarely touch, it goes into Excel. For accounting, our choice is QuickBooks. I know there's stuff like FreshBooks and uh, different options out there that everybody seems to have their own preference for, but I found that QuickBooks had a really good interface. They also had a good mobile app and their customer support in the beginning was great as well because I had no idea how to do anything and how to connect any accounts. This is something that we started using in about 2019 and it, isn't like a replacement for having an accounting firm as a small business, but it definitely makes their lives easier and in a lot of ways can save costs for yourself by doing some of it in-house. Um, the next thing is also another program that I've had for a long time and that is Blackmagic Speed Test. So say I have a drive that is in the computer and it just seems to be running really slow or if I'm trying to edit and a file is just not transferring that fast, I can use this to see what the read speed and write speed is and figure out if it's an issue with the drive, the reader, or the cable. A lot of times I just have like a bummed cable and it's not getting the speed that it needs to. So this is able to uh, give it a check and in this case, this drive is operating as it should. So if the computer is running slowly or if the files are taking a long time, then the issue is elsewhere. The next thing is Notion, and this is probably one of my favorite programs that I've started using in the past couple months. I think I just started using it after the whole COVID thing started happening. I saw a lot of people talking about it and decided to try it for myself. And although I needed some help, there are people who are great at using Notion who kind of walked me through it. The podcast has its own Notion. You have like the banner and everything, very customized and very satisfying, but you have all of the episodes with the status in progress and everything, and I can click on it and just change the status to standard fast track and select where we are at. So the production checklist, as you can see, everything is done on this one. You also have your episode notes for audio and video. But in addition to that, you can also add like different parameters, such as who is in charge of each thing. You can add some quick notes, some comments, add properties, um, different terms. I can spend so much time talking about Notion that if you guys wanna see a dedicated video, I'll definitely do that. Um, but below that, I've also just got like what Instagram pieces are ready to go up. So everybody's kind of on the same page. On the Formula One side, we have nothing to do with Formula One, but I decided for my company, uh, the YouTube channel, I just want to name it the Formula One where our central kind of productivity system is in this one page. So as you can see here, there is like our sponsors, there is also an inventory checklist of products that we have uh, that we plan to give away, sell or keep. From here, I can take a look at which video the sponsor is supposed to go in, which uh, class of sponsorship they are, referral link that's needed, uh, invoice, publishing status, the deadline and draft deadline, and also where it is at in progress. So as you can see, I've got a pretty busy queue right now. I think we've got about 10 sponsors that we've got to finish some work for. Uh, five of them, six of them are in progress already. So when one is ready to go, we just need to click on it and hit confirmed and approval and negotiating and just play around with the status of that. Um, above is my video checklist of not started, in progress and completed. You can add logos, you can add icons and all this stuff very easily and it just looks so good and very satisfying overall. Um, another program that I've been using for quite a few years from my university days before dropping out was Grammarly. Uh, whenever I had a school project, I was always like really, really, um, rushed. I tried to just like quickly get things done, throw it into Grammarly and hope that it would get me a couple marks here and there on punctuation. But what I like about it is that it is very customized and it actually has different parameters and alerts that allow you to customize the way that you want it written. Um, just click on your goals and you can pick whether it is a general audience, knowledgeable or expert and the kind of approach. So if you want it to be a creative piece uh, versus academic piece, it has different levels of how it makes its suggestions. So 
a lot of times with like general conversations or articles, you don't want it to be too formal. It's just not that fun to read. But if you're doing a school project, then obviously you want it to be at an academic standard. You can also pick the tone and intent, but I just like these programs where you can uh, just click and drag something in there and it'll do the job for you. So as you can see here, I've got like the uh, scripts from some of the videos. Uh, we haven't really been scripting recently, but as you can see, there's a ton of corrections in the correctness, clarity, engagement, and delivery. Um, and it gives you an overall score based on that and you can kind of pick and choose what you want to change. So for a YouTube video, I don't want it to be too formal. I want it to just be like a casual conversation that covers all the points, which is why we use a script. But you guys probably noticed my grammar absolutely sucks. I talk a lot, I talk very fast and it just all kind of just comes out. Um, so Grammarly is very effective in kind of dialing that back a little bit. I also use uh, Sonos to control all the systems around the house. So there's a Sonos back here, right here in the bedroom, the dining room and all that stuff. And when we move over to the new office, I plan to transition that as well. When it comes to using a password manager though, my personal choice is LastPass. I've used one password in the past and just some things about it, like it would autofill all over the place. I find they both have their advantages. I like the fact that um, one password integrates the two factor into their own app, whereas LastPass connects with an external one. I personally like to use uh, LastPass because you're able to just input things, it autofills, and even though having an extra layer of security is a bit of a pain in the ass, it is definitely necessary. And I've also started using a Google Titan security key for some of my, my larger accounts that I need to secure. Of course, we've got Zoom there, everybody's favorite platform, but, but for package tracking, I use deliveries, and what that allows me to do is just copy and paste packages in there and see what is about to come. It also shows you like an ETA on the number of days until something arrives, and it can also sync with your calendar. I also have the iPhone app, and it all just seamlessly works very well, and I've never had a problem with it. As for Chrome, I also have a few plugins here, and what I have on the top is Honey. So say I'm on like a page uh, on Amazon and I look up a product, so amazon.com, and I wanna view something. Um, I click on it here, but what I think Honey is most useful for is, say I'm on this Amazon page, I can click on the deal status and it'll show me the price history of this product to decide whether or not it is worth buying right now. So in this situation, it shows that this product started at a price of 379 and it is currently $446. So if I don't need it right away, I might as well wait a little bit and just see where the price will go. And I can also set a deal alert um, if I want to let me know when the prices dropped. Some of the other sites that I visit a lot are uh, the Simplecast, which I use for my podcast. And this is just like a good all-in-one platform that allows us to monitor everything. So we can go to the different episodes and take a look at um, all the ones here. You can also take a look at your audience and where everybody is coming from. But to upload an episode, I just need to hit add and I can go based on the templates of my past episodes, drag the audio file, episode summary and the notes. And even though there were a lot of options out there, as soon as I tried Simplecast, I loved it right away. And with the podcast being more of like a side project that I don't really want to spend too much time on, just having a low maintenance setup like this is great. And as you can see, the visual interface looks awesome as well. And for distribution, it is super easy. For my media company, I'm also hoping to build a portfolio as well. And the one I've been trying out is Cargo. So I use WordPress for my other website that I'm also working on, but for the media company, I felt like Cargo was like a bit of a creative feel to it. Um, and as you can see, it's got this like kind of hover. It's still a bit messy and we need to work on that, but um, we can put our video content in the top and the way we uh, edit all the different parameters is also very creative and intuitive as well. And as someone who has no experience in coding and still doesn't know how to do any sort of HTML, I feel like using a program like Cargo that is very visualized allows me to get the most out of it. For my personal website, I use WordPress with a theme that I purchased off ThemeForest, but it has been a long process to try to get a website up that syncs some of our YouTube content into a written form that is maybe more synthesized, but I don't know when that's gonna launch because we've been working on it and chipping it away for a while, but with all these videos that we've got to make as well, I feel like that is my main priority. And with WordPress, for anybody who does like web development, you might know that the options are limitless. You can literally do anything you want on it. And the hosting service that I use is Kinsta because it is a great all-in-one platform that kind of backs everything up and just has something in a very visual interface for someone like myself who doesn't really understand how to build a website properly. But otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it and hope you enjoyed this like office set just to give you a bit more of a look before my full video. If you guys liked it, make sure you subscribe, drop a like on this video, and I'll see you all in the next one.